And if the sky were the residence of the gods and something different happened in the sky, people freaked out. What do you know of the Deep Space Comet Hunter? NASA's Deep Impact Project was the most traveled deep space comet hunter of its time, having completed nearly a decade of comet exploration. The spacecraft made two comet visits and took pictures of two more. The mission also looked for exoplanets, analyzed their atmospheres, and then treated Earth like any other exoplanet. Deep Impact was instrumental in the discovery of lunar water and relayed data from several interplanetary internet projects. But its remote sensing has produced so many unexpected findings that our knowledge of comet formation and operation has completely changed. Also, NASA has declined to receive some disturbing images captured in the probe's final moments, so clearly something out of the ordinary is going on. Is this NASA's last attempt at paying homage after all these years? Or might there be a hidden agenda to this? Join us as we investigate what secrets the Deep Impact mission carried and the role that NASA played in it. In the Annals of Astronomy, comets have been described as roving balls. They first appeared around 4.6 billion years ago, when our solar system was just beginning to take shape. Gases and dust were ejected into space during the formation of the Sun. While some of these elements eventually coalesced into planets, large amounts of dust and gas settled into orbits close to, but distant from the Sun. About 4 billion years ago, these components solidified into balls that scientists believe to be comets. The comets contained ice, dust, organic matter, and maybe even rock. They continue to accumulate more trash as they round the solar system. Thus, comets provide a glimpse into the solar system's past. But with diameters of up to 60 miles, you can't just reach up and snag one in a big net in order to study it. Still, scientists are finding a way to get the information. A conical capsule touched down in the Utah desert in January 2006 with the first comet samples and the first pure evidence of interstellar dust ever recorded. The capsule was released from the NASA Stardust spacecraft, which went on to become the first mission to visit two comets as it continued its journey through space. Stardust, which took out in 1999, was stopped by an asteroid, came dangerously close to Comet Wild 2, and then landed back on Earth to return with samples. The box-shaped spacecraft was stopped by Comet Temple 1 during its prolonged journey. The spacecraft had covered almost 12 years' worth of ground, or around 5.7 billion miles, by the time the mission concluded in March 2011. Researchers are still looking for dust particles embedded in materials carried by the spacecraft that returned to Earth over a decade ago, even though the mission has ended. A pair of solar arrays and a 101-pound sample return capsule were launched into Earth's atmosphere on the boxy Stardust spacecraft, which collected dust from comets and interstellar space. The spacecraft had a number of engineering instruments needed for spacecraft functioning, in addition to two specialized scientific instruments, which also gathered scientific data. The sample gathering aerogel was the most valuable device available from Stardust. The substance is primarily empty space and has a porous, sponge-like structure. It is based on silicon. A traditional collector's high-speed capture may change the shape and chemical content of the particles Stardust was trying to sample, as they were moving at speeds up to six times faster than a rifle bullet. However, Aerogel was able to collect the high-speed particles with little heating or chemical modification. Scientists were able to follow the pathways of individual particles in the Aerogel by following the carrot-shaped tracks they left behind, which were up to 200 times longer than the particles themselves. Among Stardust's principal scientific goals, was a low-velocity flyby of WILD-2 to collect interstellar dust particles and samples for reuse. This would also make it possible to retrieve a large number of high-resolution pictures of the comet's core and coma. Stardust gathered cosmic dust that predates our solar system on its journey to WILD-2. The spacecraft came within 2,050 miles of the 5,535 Anna Frank asteroid in 2003. 
While taking pictures of Anne Frank, the mission crew utilized the small asteroid as a dry run to see if they could enhance Stardust's flyby accuracy. The Stardust spacecraft descended into Earth's atmosphere in January 2006 with its conical capsule. The capsule landed at the US Air Force Test and Training Range in the Utah desert. The capsule was moved to Houston's Johnson Space Center within two days, and the lengthy search for the small particles in aerogel began there. Before receiving funding for an extended mission known as the New Exploration of Temple, One or Next, Stardust was put into hibernation in space. Before it, in 2005, a probe was crashed into Temple, One by NASA's Deep Impact spacecraft. There were two spacecraft involved in the Deep Impact mission. The coffee table size primary vehicle carried a second, smaller probe planned to crash into the first comet that the mission encountered, Temple 1. The spacecraft blasted out on January 12, 2005 from Cape Canaveral in Florida. Deep Impact and Comet Temple had their rendezvous on July 1st. Standing at 7.5 feet tall, 10.8 feet wide, and 5.6 feet deep, Deep Impact was quite a sight. Besides the scientific equipment, the spacecraft also had solar panels and a debris screen to protect itself from comet debris. High-resolution instruments and medium-resolution instruments were two scientific tools that captured pictures of comets and planetary bodies. An infrared spectrometer was also on board Deep Impact. The spacecraft released its smaller impactor craft onto Temple 1's trajectory on July 4, 2005. Powered by batteries, the impactor carried the impactor targeting sensor, a highly accurate star tracker that tracked the spacecraft's path and took close-range pictures of the comet. With the last picture delivered just 3.7 seconds before impact, the photos were transferred in real time to the main vehicle. The spacecraft also carried a disk of 625 names submitted by people from around the world. Carving out a crater on Temple 1, the 816-pound impactor, which was mostly copper, delivered 19 gigajoules of kinetic energy. That's as much energy as 4.8 tonnes of TNT. According to measurements taken by NASA's Stardust mission in 2011, the impactor punched out a crater about 500 feet wide, traveling at an estimated 23,000 miles per hour. The sun's rays and heat melt the dust from these snowballs, turning them into charred shells. The small spacecraft's collision with the Comet Temple, one produced a cloud of debris that blew off the comet, giving astronomers their first look at the comet's pristine interior. The material was found to be covered in a fine powder, similar to talcum powder rather than beach sand. Its environment must be considered with it. Floating in a vacuum is this city-sized object. The only things that can annoy it are mild sunburn or the impact of an 820-pound wake-up call delivered at 23,000 miles per hour. Investigating the comet from both the inside and the outside was the major objective of the Deep Impact mission. There were two sections to the Deep Impact spacecraft, the flyby and the impactor. Parts of the spacecraft detached as they approached the comet. The two bodies collided because the impactor obstructed the comet's trajectory. A crater significantly deeper than the comet's surface was carved out by the impact, revealing the previously concealed pristine material that had been generated during the early stages of our solar system. Researchers now have a unique opportunity to study the early solar system through the debris that was expelled from the impact crater, as well as the comet's unique features that were revealed by the crater. Comets are unexpectedly fluffy, according to the mission's experts. The exterior shell is at least 75% empty and the nucleus is at least 50% empty. Comets may be more permeable than previously thought, according to the result, which corroborated earlier indirect observations. The Swift Space Telescope, operated by NASA, measured the impact's water discharge, which was around 250,000 tonnes, much more than anticipated. According to Swift's X-ray observations, the comet needed 12 days to get back to its usual state. What do we now know about crater formation? 
Comet nuclei are thought by scientists to have two layers. The mantle, which is located on the outside, and the pristine, which is located within. Comet mantle changes occur throughout the comet's passage through the solar system. When it gets closer to the Sun, some of the ice on the outside melts and melts away. It could potentially come across other pieces of trash and collect them. On the other hand, the comet's protected, immaculate interior is believed to have remained unchanged since its formation and is therefore unaffected by the comet's journeys. Researchers think they can learn a lot about the solar system's history and how it came to be by comparing and contrasting the two layers. Whether comets become inactive or disappear entirely as a result of the sun's radiation is another big mystery to scientists. If the comet's mantle has completely walled off its immaculate internal layer, rendering it inert, then no gases can escape or enter the comet from its interior. Because it no longer contains any gas in its nucleus, an extinct comet will remain unchanged forever. Findings from the Deep Impact Probe helped scientists better understand the mantle and establish whether Temple 1 is active, inactive, or gone forever. We learned a lot about comets from the data produced by the impactor's collision. The crater's final dimensions, development pace, and other formation-related data provide light on the mantle and pristine layer's porosity. The porosity, density, and maybe mass of the comet were revealed by studying the material's eruption from the crater. Scientists can learn more about the comet's genesis and evolution through time by analyzing data collected during the cratering process, which provides clues as to the comet's composition. New information about the process by which the solar wind removes material from planets and comets was also uncovered by Swift's X-ray observations. Now, we can observe, for the first time, the movement of cometary particles from the surface to the upper atmosphere. Interesting details regarding the atmosphere of a comet and its relationship to the solar wind can be gleaned from this. Nobody has ever gone there before. In order to compile a catalogue of cometary components, the Deep Impact team collaborated with NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. The creation of our planet and other more distant worlds can be better understood with the use of this data. Based on these findings, the comet might have formed in the solar system region currently occupied by Neptune and Uranus. According to the NICE model, which proposes that those two planets switched places and sent comets hurtling into space. This discovery lends credence to that theory. The Deep Impact Mission Team proposed an extended mission that would essentially entail a visit to another comet and a hunt for exoplanets after the probe sailed past Temple 1. A new mission, Epoxy, was formed after the Deep Impact Extended Study and the Extrasolar Planet Observation and Characterization Study were combined. Deep Impact remained the name of the spacecraft. Initially, the extended mission called for Deep Impact to visit comet 85P slash Bothan, which was last observed in 1986. Because of its 11.8 year orbit, that comet can be seen from Earth only during the six months when the comet is closest to the Sun. In what can only be described as a heroic effort, astronomers searched for comet radiation using Spitzer and 10 of the greatest telescopes in the world. But they failed to locate their target and theorized that the comet may have fragmented as a result of a cataclysmic explosion. Comet Hartley 2 was the new objective for astronomers when the initial target was lost. This comet had a famous orbit when it was first found in March 1986. It would take two more years to reach the destination than it would have taken with a journey to Berthen. Exoplanets were the focus of Epoxy's mechanical observations during its extended mission. Discovering habitable planets orbiting other stars was far more difficult before NASA's planet-hunting Kepler spacecraft. That was changed by deep impact. The spacecraft studied massive gas giants orbiting five different stars in days or even hours worlds known as hot Jupiters. A second, smaller planet might be hiding out in each of the five potential targets. 
In order to determine whether the known world's orbits are being slightly pushed to one side or the other by the gravity of these invisible planets, Deep Impact set out to examine the hot Jupiters. Although no extraterrestrial life was detected by epoxy, a second planet may be circling one of the stars, Gliese 436, according to data found by the mission. While the presence of a second planet near this star has not been officially established, there have been suggestions of such a world in other places. Deep Impact also studied a planet you all hear about often. That is Earth. The spacecraft analyzed Earth during a full rotation five times, providing exoplanet hunters with a better idea of what a habitable terrestrial world could look like. While other spacecraft had previously observed the Earth and Moon from space, Deep Impact was the first to observe with enough clarity to see huge craters on the Moon and seas and continents on the Earth. Changes in the planet's brightness were shown by the observations, many of which were turned into videos. Additionally, at a distance of around 11 million miles, the research found sun glints, which are tiny spots of light that resemble sunlight reflecting off a car's hood. A planet outside of our solar system with sun glints would be a good indicator that it contains water, lakes or oceans, among other enormous volumes of liquid. We would have a lot higher hope of discovering life on a faraway planet if we discovered huge amounts of water there. Infrared light, which is invisible to the naked eye, was another wavelength that epoxy used to study Earth. Red light makes plants stand out and improves the contrast between land and water. People think of land as being greenish, but that's because our eyes aren't sensitive in the infrared. Vegetation actually shows up better in the infrared. The spacecraft was also instrumental in finding the first definitive proof of water on the Moon's surface. Collaborating with the Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft from India and the Cassini space probe from the United States, Deep Impact demonstrated that the Moon produces a liquid similar to dew every day, which evaporates and hydrates the entire surface of the Moon at some point during the lunar day. The flyby of Comet Hartley 2 was the most notable aspect of Deep Impact's extended mission. Hartley 2 became the fifth comet nucleus visited by a spacecraft when the spacecraft flew within 435 miles of it on November 4, 2010. Over the course of eight days in September, as Deep Impact drew nearer to Comet Hartley 2, the spacecraft detected an uptick in cyanide emissions from the object without a matching increase in dust emissions. Astronomers on the ground were unable to make accurate observations due to this comet's unprecedented activity. Additionally, the spacecraft traversed a cometary ice storm, which was caused by carbon dioxide gas jets that released tons of water ice from the comet on a daily basis. The discovery of ice fragments in a comet's cloud and jets proven to be propelled by carbon dioxide gas were firsts for astronomers. Around Temple 1, the crew searched for comparable occurrences, but found none. The scientists' jaws fell the moment they laid eyes on the nucleus and all those tiny particles encircling it. It looks like something out of a crystal snow globe when the stereo shots show snowballs in front of and behind the nucleus. Additionally, scientists were able to associate specific surface features with dust and gas jets thanks to Deep Impact's first sufficiently sharp pictures of a comet. Scientists discovered that Hartley 2's jets were propelled by carbon dioxide rather than aqueous ice. All things considered, the evidence pointed to Hartley 2 being a completely novel type of comet. Whether comets were assembled from a single mass of dust and ice pulled together by gravity or from a collection of smaller comets that gradually accumulated their cores was a topic of controversy among researchers during that time. As a third hypothesis, Hartley 2's extremely constant composition led scientists to suspect that the object's core contains two or even three distinct kinds of ice. Comet Hartley 2 is extremely dynamic, whirling around on one axis and tumbling on the other. Between 5 to 10% of comets are hyperactive. Hyperactive comets differ from regular comets in that their jets and other carbon dioxide-driven activities alter typical comet processes like outgassing. Coming in from the solar system's farthest regions, 
Comets Garrett and Ison were observed by Deep Impact after it passed Hartley 2. Team members also began searching for a third potential spaceship destination. However, the Deep Impact spacecraft lost communication with NASA on August 8, 2013. At that moment, the spacecraft had travelled almost 4.7 billion miles into space, yet it still hadn't returned any photographs of Comet Ison. Mission controllers attempted to uplink commands to start Deep Impact's onboard systems for several weeks after losing contact. Loss of control of the spacecraft's orientation in space was most likely caused by an issue with computer timing, according to NASA. Consequently, the probe struggled with communication and power generation due to issues with situating its radio antenna and solar arrays. By the 16th of September 2013, NASA reluctantly cancelled the remarkably successful mission. Deep Impact was a fantastic, long-lasting spacecraft that generated far more data than was anticipated. Our knowledge of comets and their activities was completely transformed by it. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.